Hi, my name is Andreas and some say the perfect aircraft does not exist yet. So I decided to build it on my own. If you love aircraft, follow me, get it from dream to reality. Let's go. Hi, welcome back my friends. I wanted to try something new and so I asked my good friend Jackie to take the camera today and film from some different angles. As you can see everything is already prepared for creating the molds but we want to have a last check for the engine inlet fit. So the task for today is create an engine inlet a mock up which we can use to check uh, how well it fits to the fuselage. I am starting with a layer of epoxy applied to the surface. This helps applying the first layer of glass and it also minimizes the amount of air bubbles which would later create pinholes. The molds have already been prepared in advance with a layer of wax and a layer of PVA release agent. With the epoxy coated surface it's now much easier to drape the glass cloth into the form. Of course, there will always be a wrinkle here and there, but you can get rid of them by simply pulling at the end of the cloth. Always start at the middle and then just work your way outside from there. You can see by the color where it's already attached and where not. Don't forget to always cut away excess material. It's just dead weight and in the worst case it can even pull away the edges from the mold. And here you can see me already working on the second layer. You can spot trapped air bubbles by their white color. This way you just roll on epoxy until everything has a uniform black color. The engine inlets will get four layers of glass cloth in total but as this is a mock-up only, I'm not minding their direction. In the left mold, I'm already applying the third layer, while on the right side you can see the first two layers finished. I didn't want to waste too much material, so I cut the last layer only after I used up all the pre-cut material. This is now the fourth and final layer for the first mold. The principle is always the same, roll on epoxy until everything turns black. At first it will soak up all the excess resin from below, reducing the overall weight. You only need additional resin if an area stays white, although you rolled it a few times already. And we are in the fine lab. This is the fourth and final layer of the second mold. Normally I would use some peel ply for a better surface and lighter weight, but as it's only the mock-up, it's just don't necessary. It's funny that I just guessed the amount of resin that I will need and it turned out exactly the right amount. Especially in the corners I had to make sure that I get rid of all trapped air bubbles. So it's better to spend two additional minutes of rolling, but then have a nice part afterwards. So for the last time, cutting away the excess material. The inlet will be a monocoque, a single piece part, so that we need to have an overlap. For this reason I'm cutting the boundary exact to the edge on one side but I'm leaving 3 quarters of an inch for the overlap on the other side. Finally I'm assembling together the two mold halves. We are using screw inserts which act as guiding pins and also hold together the two mold halves. Just 3 more screws and then the forms are connected. Almost done uh, and a little bit more here and uh, you know it's always the last one which wants a little bit of extra attention. There is a little bit of trapped air in the overlap which I have to carefully get out. 
In the real part I will use vacuum to get it perfect, but this would be much more work. Also in the front I have to make sure that there is a good overlap. And the last task for today is creating the lip for the engine inlet. We could have added this to the monocoque, but Tom voted for having a separate part so that it can be built more easily. The lip is less than one inch thick, which makes it a little bit tricky to get everything inside. I tried to get as much resin on as possible using the roller, but I ended up using my fingers instead. I just didn't want to waste a good brush for less than 5 minutes of work. And as long as the fingers also do the trick, why not? So this is how the inlet lip looked like after I got finished. And this is how the remaining engine inlet looked like. I didn't have time to go back to the workshop after this video, but Tom was so kind and sent me one from his phone of how well the inlet fits to the fuselage. I would say, mission accomplished and we are finally go for the next chapter. If you liked the video, hit the like button like a bird strike at 300 knots and subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy your life. Do what you like most and as always, fly safe, fly Horus.